Hello everybody! Welcome to another episode of Reacting Reddit, where real humans read, react, and summarize trending topics and stories. Today we're going to be looking at a newer post where uh, people share the, the toys that our parents and their parents and their parents' parents used to use that nowadays would be a big no-no. And this post was originally by a Breadstick Samurai, and the original post states, Older generations of Reddit, what toys did you have as a child that would be considered too dangerous to be given to a child today? Let's get started. My dentist used to give me vials of mercury to bring to school for show and tell. My parents bought me a rock collection at a natural history museum that included a chunk of asbestos from which you could pull the fibrous material. We also had metal trucks with extremely sharp edges and lead-based paint jobs. Oof, getting brutal, isn't it? Pepper Ann One in a Million says, not just theorized, there is good evidence from Europe. Because of the directive to remove lead was EU-wide, and the violence dropped in every country despite them having vastly different social and economic environments. There's basically no other explanation that works for every country. And it's called the lead crime hypothesis, okay? There are 10 comments below all arguing about what we should call it, and none of them actually talking about lead, crime, cars, or fuel. And in the eight hours since I posted this comment, I'm the first one to bother Googling it to find out what the proper term is. Oh, classic right there. Classic Reddit. Funk Moon adds, that's because the evidence is so circumstantial as to only cause a hypothesis. It's definitely not a theory. It's an observation of something in the real world, and then someone with exactly no evidence other than an interesting phenomenon coinciding with another phenomenon guessed a cause. That's exactly what a hypothesis is. Obama's boss says, I'm not a boomer. My parents are not even boomers. I played a little with a little jar of mercury as a kid. My mom had it in an old chemistry set. I had the older metal Tonka trucks. We had an old coal furnace that was converted to natural gas, and it included asbestos insulation. You don't have to be old, I get, to get the, to these things. My younger cousin used to eat lead paint. Dang. My father died of uh, lung cancer, and his father also died of lung cancer, my grandfather, and he was an asbestos worker. I had a rock with asbestos in it too, by Fluffy Duckling. Pulling the threads off of it was very interesting. I was a curi curious child. We had a very large suburban backyard. I smashed a car battery open using an old tin can. I smelted the lead down into tin can shaped ingots over a small open fire. Did you know you can draw on paper with a lead pencil? My uncle did some gold panning and I also tried using mercury to extract the gold and then using a tin can over the fire tried to drive off the mercury to leave the gold behind. Because the amount of gold was so minuscule, I still have no idea to this date if I was successful or not. I was also given a chemistry set in a large box. It had test tubes and all sorts of things. I've still got it around somewhere. It definitely had copper sulfate. I can't remember what else. Yeah, fun fact, you can actually get gold out of circuit boards by melting down old computer parts because uh, there was a certain era of computer processors that were made with gold parts. So you can soak them in mercury and other chemicals to extract the gold, and that's an actual thing that scrappers will do. Mayor Penguin says, I had the potentially even more dangerous version, a mini metal melter to make jewelry in the late 90s and early 2000s. Technically, it had a safety latch and wouldn't switch on unless the plastic lid was closed over the smelter. However, as a curious preteen penguin decides to jam a pen into it and disable the mechanism. Lots of unsafe fun was had. <laughs> unsafe fun is sometimes some of the best fun. <laughs> Stars and Stripes 702 says, I remember a toy we had called Creepy Crawlers, and it was basically an Eevee bake oven for boys. Instead of baking food, you put plastic into metal molds that was shaped like various insects. 
After it was in the oven for a while, you'd take it out and have a new plastic or rubber creepy crawler. <laughs> Let's bake some unedible plastic. Woo! Sup, dude, says, huh. That reminds me of when my sister and I got a machine that melts chocolate so you can put it into molds. It was taking too long to heat up, so we had the bright idea of putting the machine into the microwave to heat it up faster. <laughs> Immediate sparks. A failure to stop the heater from being turned on if the lid was opened. That is a pretty serious hazard. It means that if the toy got knocked over accidentally when the lid was open, molten crayon could land on someone. So many product liability suits are from machines that let you operate them with the dangerous bits exposed. At this point, you'd figure product engineering 101 would be to not do that. Well, it sort of is. <laughs> Matt081 says, well, I would hate to see the old ones. We bought one thinking it would be cool, forgot about it in the gar gar garage, and our son saw one at the store and wanted it, so we bought it. That thing is a burn machine. Definitely not okay for a six-year-old to operate. Yusirabia says, me too. The newer ones fix the issue, Meme Sniper mentioned. You can't open the lid while the heater is on, and you can't open the heater unless the lid is closed. There's an automatic five-minute shutoff for the heater, and a ten-minute timer on the lid lock to cool down. <laughs> Classic. You know, when electricity started, we were just plugging stuff into light sockets and you could easily get electrocuted and loads of people did. We've, we've come a long, long way. Oh my god, it's Moki says, I still have a scar on my far forearm from one of those. Even then, I remember my brain telling me these types of toys are dumb. You buy it and what you can make, a few squishy things that collect dirt and get lost before you run out of stuff to make more. But oh god, did I love playing it when I got it. You know, that's life. I mean, most things that are fun, our brain will be like, Oh, why am I going to do this? I have no reason to do this. It's not going to be fun. I mean, do I even care about what, what this is? You know, I mean, why do I... And then you do it and it's like, Oh shit, I'm full of crap. That was actually really enjoyable. <laughs> the other mask says, I had one. The only thing I really remember was how pissed my dad got when I used a microwave for the timer. Problem was, I didn't use the timer function, but rather ran the microwave for 15 minutes, or whatever it was, with nothing in it, 10 times in a row. He worked on offshore oil rigs, and while he was a great dad, he used quite colorful language with us kids. After an explicitive laced inquisition into what the guy was doing, he taught me how to use the timer and informed me not to do some stupid gang shit like that again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what happens to a microwave if you just use it for 15 minutes straight without anything inside of it? I don't know. Bo Biddy Sauce says, I burned the ever-living Christ out of my right-hand fingers on one of those. A buddy of mine was pulling out a freshly baked batch but the tongs holding the metal mold were precarious, so I quickly grabbed it out of the tongs to place it on a safe platform. Needless to say, burn fun times ensued. I loved my creepy crawler machine. My parents let me open that grift on Christmas Eve. I played a trick on Santa by placing one of my bugs in a present for Santa. The goal was to get him to scream so it would wake me up and I could finally run down and meet him. It worked. I heard the scream, but I didn't get downstairs in time to see him. Thanks, Dad, for playing along. <laughs> That's so funny. Just imagining a kid waiting and then the dad acts. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oh, Jesus Christ. I love moments like that. Copernicus says, We had them in the Netherlands, too. The package was like a pack of smokes, and the chocolate had the shape of a cigarette, with a white paper wrap and a filter. In my recollection, these were available during the celebration of St. Nicholas period, the end of November till early December. I <laughs> like how he says the celebration of St. Nicholas. <laughs> Super common name adds, true story. For a friend's 25th birthday, a bunch of us took her to an elegant restaurant and gave her assorted gag gifts. One of them was candy cigarettes. We were joking around, smoking them, when the waiter came over to tell us that no smoking was allowed. 
We nearly died laughing until he told us the table next to us complained. We looked over and they were glaring at us. We tried to explain, but they had no sense of humor about it at all. The funniest part is that the cigarettes only emit one or two puffs of powdered candy. <laughs> Wait, they, they actually powder they? <laughs> you can make puffs come out of a candy cigarette? I didn't know that was a thing. I remember those candies though. They had like Spider-Man ones. And I always thought that was, even as a kid, I was like, why do they have candy cigarettes? Isn't that just normalizing us smoking cigarettes? This seems retarded. Macfile says, yeah, we had those. It's funny how normal that was back then. Like, it was just cute or funny to sell cigarette candy to kids. They used to be able to advertise cigarettes, like, anywhere, instead of nowhere at all, like now. I had a magazine and tacked to my wall because I thought it was cute with anthropomor wow, anthropomorphic cigarettes. And of course, there was a smoking section on planes, smoking in malls, and so on. Fun fact, I did start smoking, so yeah, it worked. Vic Trebolker says, My cousin and I pretended to smoke them all day just to freak people out. We would sit in the back of her parents' jeep in traffic with them and laugh at all the looks we were getting. Yeah, we both ended up smoking. But we quit in our 30s. <laughs> this. The ice cream man actually sold them for about $2. An adult had seen me with them and blow smoke out of them. Then gave me a whole speech about how people were dying on their deathbed or whatnot. I was in third grade. I was just like, okay. <laughs> Sad face. I wonder if that person actually smoked. All the others who talked about it said they did end up actually smoking. Okay, Crendon says, My playground at my school had a collection of telephone poles randomly piled together like giant pickup sticks. It was great for climbing on and falling from great heights. There was absolutely nothing safe about it, and it was the best playground ever. I should point out that the poles were bolted together when they interacted, so they wouldn't shift. It wasn't a total death trap. <laughs> Wait, there were just a bunch of poles in a pile, bolted all together in their pile? That's kind of funny. It's a fish 20 says, my elementary school, 94 in 94, had one of those old rocket slides that had been, wow, had to have 50, wow, had to have been 50 feet tall off the ground at the highest level. This thing was all metal and shaped like a rocket. It had ladders going all the way up to the top that would come to these interior platforms that had slides. All in all, there were four slides and maybe seven levels in the interior. It was super rusted and would sway on windy days or days when a lot of kids were playing on it. It was surrounded by a grass field though, so when kids would fall off, they'd be okay. <laughs> Better grass and cement. Honestly though, that sounds like an amazing playground. As a kid, I loved playgrounds that looked cool or had cool stuff in them or were unique. Like, I seriously loved it. PM me the up tops says, we had a monkey bar cage that was shaped like a life-size covered wagon in the area that only six-year-olds were allowed to play in. They had a running streak of a kid falling off and breaking their arm once a school year that started before I started going there and ended when I was in high school and they tore it down. <laughs> Apple Pone says, I love these 1980s dangerous playgrounds, jungle gyms that reach 20 feet above the ground. The ground was generally covered in smashed beer bottle glass. The merry-go-round thing the kids would always spin was dangerously fast. It's funny that getting the wind knocked out of you was a weekly occurrence as a kid, but that hasn't happened to me once as an adult. <laughs> yeah, right? I remember learning why you're not supposed to use the front brakes of a bicycle while going down a hill. And also learning what getting the wind knocked out of you are in the same or is in the same same experience. Bike front brakes are not your friend on a hill. They are not. <laughs> Since last November says a chemistry set. My brother and I were totally unsupervised and never followed the instructions. We just mixed chemicals together at random to see what would happen. I remember one combination turned into this really smelly black foam-like substance. My dad and his brothers didn't have a chemistry set, but their father did let them play with mercury in his workshop. They also taught themselves to make a zip gun, I think they were called. Basically, guns crafted from parts like car antennas. Yeah, yeah, making ghetto 
uh, firing crossbows and things. Uh, I remember we used to make crossbow mechanisms out of connects and rubber bands. That was super fun. <laughs> it was really fun, and then we'd shoot each other with them. Badger Sprite says, My dad was born in the 50s, and chemistry set in his days did not fuck around. They had all kinds of chemicals in them that, if mixed together, could start fires or cause explosions, which may be very fine in small, com- in small quantities, but the chemistry sets explicitly did not give directions of how much or how little to use. I think he said his chemistry set also came with a small amount of radioactive material, which I'm pretty sure was harmless unless you eat it. His parents made him move to the garage when he started doing experiments, so he didn't blow up the house. Anyway, he went on to become a scientist, so the chemistry sets did do something right. Life's fun and it's gonna kill you, so... Being scared of death... I mean, it's admirable in some cases, but... We are here to live a great life and a meaningful life before we die, and if you're terrified of death, you're not gonna do that. You gotta, you gotta have a healthy respect for death, right? To make sure it doesn't happen to you, but also understand that most of the things you're scared of aren't going to kill you. Make Onions Cry says, As a kid in the 60s, my uncle looks up gunpowder in the family encyclopedia and headed off to the pharmacy with his pocket money. He could barely reach up to the counter, but they were happy to sell him a pound of each ingredient. He now has a PhD in chemistry, and most of his peers have similar stories. Shiplap Travertine says, My cousin and I did the same thing. One time we got a cork stuck in a beaker, and we, without eye protection, decided to take a Bunsen burner, the more I try to remember, it may have been a candle actually, to heat it to pop the cork off. Yeah, don't do that. The beaker exploded, and we got hot unknown liquid in our face. The good Lord blessed us to not get that unknown substance in our eyes or glass shards in our faces or get some kind of permanent fuck up. Zafad Bro says, not zip guns, but as kids we would make those weapons out of a 10, 10 inch PVC tube and a balloon. You tie the balloon to one end, drop a pebble or small rock into the other end, pull back the pebble inside the balloon and let it go. Those screws would break skin and cause serious damage. We broke a friend's glasses once. You could also use dried beans as ammo. Oh, that's pretty cool. We also did that. Um, not, we wouldn't use projectiles, though. We used PVC tube and pipe insulation and duct tape. So we would get pipes, we would wrap them in duct tape, and then wrap, or wrap them in pipe insulation, and then type them up and make swords, and then beat the shit out of each other. And it was incredibly fun. We called it LARPing. But we weren't actually role-playing. We were just attacking each other with swords. Turtle Tucker says, I kind of recall having a train that could smoke, but I don't know if it worked with water vapor or something. It had a smell to it, but it wasn't anything too bad. I also had these little Godzilla figures that had a flint inside them. Running them against the ground could shoot a pretty steady stream of sparks. Oh, that is the classic cheap toy, and to this day, you find those all over areas where, like, cheap thrills are the common kid toy. Like, maybe you don't see that as much in the U.S., where safety and precaution and fire hazards are more of a concern, but I can tell you that here in Latin America, we have plenty of those toys that you run along the ground that make sparks. Uh, Those things are all over the place. (laughs) Shy Tai says... I had a remote-controlled Godzilla that did the same thing. Well, the remote was attached with a wire because this was the 90s, but it was by far the coolest toy that I owned. It would totter a few steps, then roar and shoot sparks, which absolutely stunk. I tried to find it on eBay last year in a fit of nostalgia. No luck. I guess they were all lost to inexplicable, unexplainable, unrelated house fires. (laughs) Chris Codisco... 6618 says, I had a large red plastic toy that looked like a treasure chest in my bedroom closet growing up. When I was around seven, late at night, the toy box would start talking to me from the closet, calling my name, Michael, in a low, creaky voice. For weeks, I was terrified to fall asleep because I knew I'd wake up to the voice again. Yet every morning when the sun filled my room, I'd open the lid 
and it would just be toys, like it should be. Finally, I was able to convince my mom that I wasn't making it up. I told her to go sleep in my room that night with me, and shortly thereafter she woke me up with, Michael, wake up, I hear it. Long story short, we discovered it was my talking K-I-T-T, with very low batteries, talking away in slow motion by itself. I don't know if those things should be illegal, but I definitely feel the experience damaged me. Kit? Talking kit? Is that like a, a kitten? Or a talking kit? Uh, like recording something? Interesting. Throws Soy Milkshake says, I had one of those electronic guns with the LEDs on the top that made all kinds of different laser gun type noises. One night, it just started making random screaming and growling noises all on its own because the batteries were dying. It scared the hell out of me, to the point where I didn't move or sleep all night until my mom came in to wake me up. It was horrible. Oh, and for those who want a little laugh or a spook, let me introduce you to low battery sounds. <laughs> I've seen that subreddit before and it is very creepy. Like you'd think those noises were made on purpose. Now for our last post, I chose this says, this happened in 2013. I was working with a woman who said she absolutely hated going into her basement because she was convinced that it was haunted but no one in her family believes her. She'd be down there doing laundry and a creepy child sing-along song would start the voice, now I lay me down to sleep prayer. I nearly got slapped imitating it a few weeks after she told us this. Before I left the job, her son-in-law was in the basement heard the prayer, got creeped out and started searching and he finally found some bear stuffed in a tote and took the batteries away. <laughs> that's super funny. All right, everybody, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you like this content, please do one of the four following. Watch another video, subscribe to our channel, like this video or comment below. Let me know what you think. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.